Data scaling is a step we do to give features the same importance when doing classification. Now, maybe we don't want exactly that, and we'll talk about adding weights to features later, but leveling the playing field is something you need to know to do anyways. And there are two techniques people commonly use for this. The one I'll focus on is called normalization, where the values are remapped to be between 0 and 1. If you plan to follow along, make sure you have the code from last time, or get my version from GitHub, and let's make sure the nearest neighbor classifier doesn't tip the scale to favor one feature more than others. Get it? Tip the scale? Because we're scaling the day? No, 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 no! Gonna code, debug, and have fun coding with Radu. Coding with Radu, gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu, let's code now. We'll normalize the data here, after we have the feature values. And we do that by calling a function we'll need to implement in utils. Normalize points that takes the sample points. So from the samples, we remap them to extract just a point, like this. Now let's save this and go to utils in common and implement at the end of it, the new normalize points function. Given the points, this function will change their values to be between 0 and 1. For that, we need to have here the minimum and maximum on each of the dimensions. Each feature corresponds to one dimension. And until now, we've been using just two dimensions, but later I'll teach you how to use more. So let's prepare this function to be general enough. We'll initialize min and max to be the first point values. I'm creating a new array here with the values so they don't accidentally get changed later. And same for the max. In the beginning, they are just whatever are the values of the first point. But then we will loop through the remaining points starting at 1. And now we start to loop through the dimensions. Let's extract these dimensions up here so it's clearer how many there are they are just going to be equal to the length of the first point, for example. All of them should be the same. Now, back down here, we can loop with another variable, j, through each of these dimensions and update min of j to be the minimum between the previous min of j and whatever the point of i and j is. Same thing for the max, but using the maximum function from the math library. And now we have our min and max. With them, we transform our data next. We iterate through all the points, starting at zero this time, and through all dimensions, as before. And now our points of i and j will be modified to be between zero and one, by just subtracting the minimum value and then dividing by the difference. But this is exactly what the inverse slurp function is doing from our chart component. I will call it here and implement a new version in utils. So between min and max, we convert this given value into a percentage. Let's close these and quickly implement our inverse slurp function here above this one, return v minus a divided by v minus a, like so. Save the file, and I think we forgot to include it in feature extraction, so let me go up here and utils require utils from common. Save the file, and in the terminal we type node feature extractor and if we look in our data data set features now they are all values between 0 and 1 and if we refresh the page you can see this reflected right here 
0 and 1 on the x-axis, 0 and 1 on the y-axis. And this is now the true distribution of the data. The chart is not tricking us anymore. But before we can test the classification, we need to normalize the features extracted from this drawing to this same space using the same min-max values computed earlier. Now my point just went somewhere very, very high up there. It's connected to this car right here, but I can't even fit it on screen anymore. To do that, we need to use these min-max values from here. So let's return them from this function like this, save this file, and in feature extractor, we take them out here. And now at the end, I'm going to write them in one of these JavaScript object files that we use to communicate with the interface. We need a new constant for that. We'll call it minmax.js. And it will just have minmax is equal to, and we stringify the value of minmax like this. Save this. And in constants.js, let's add a line for this at the end. Constants minmax.js also in the JS objects, minmax.js. Save this file and let's generate the file here in JS objects. We need to use the terminal, extract the features again, and now the minmax values are here in this file. We can now load them in our viewer HTML in the same way that we load our features up here. but with min max instead. And now it's a global variable. We'll need to use them to normalize this point from here before we attempt to classify it. So we go here and say utils normalize points. It accepts multiple points, but we can just wrap this one in an array like that and it will work. But we need to update this normalize points function to support a given min max value, right? So back in utils, if we pass here also a min max value in addition to the points, we don't need to calculate them. So we just go here and check if min max exists, that parameter there, then min is min max dot min, max is min max dot max, and we close this. Else we have to recalculate these, like so. Now let's go to our web page, refresh, and when we draw something here, our point is here, right where it needs to be. Let's zoom in and see what happens locally. When we draw the next path, it will jump to the right column and then start to go upwards. But you can see now it's always mapped as you'd expect. We don't get those lines connecting the columns anymore. Good. But let's revert to our width and height features. They were much better at prediction than this. I'll comment these out. So they're here if we need to use them again. And now we need to re-extract the features in the terminal, refresh the page, and here they are, between zero and one, both of them. And now if I input my card drawing from earlier, ooh, you can see that it is a car. And if we zoom in here, it's not mapped to that fish anymore. It's mapped to this nearest car because now the width and height are treated equally. There's still kind of a strange thing here though. Look how this data looks like because of this one house from here. What would happen if we remove it? Sorry, Herminio. 
let's find the ID of this sample. I'm just going to drag it up here and it's 3107. I'm going to go to Feature Extractor and here after we load the samples, I will say dot filter the samples whose ID is not 3107. Let's save this and in the terminal re-extract the features. Refresh the page and you can see the data looks quite different now with just one sample missing. Herminio's house from here. Now let's bring back my drawing from earlier. Ooh, and it's a fish. Because if we zoom in here, it's now mapped to this fish. The data distribution is different, all because one point was removed. But it was an outlier point, a problematic point, so to speak. But I like Terminio's house, so I'm going to bring it back. There it is. Did you follow along? Great. Please like this video if you learned something today and share it with others so they can learn as well. And if you got stuck somewhere, ask and we'll figure it out. You can also take my version from GitHub and compare. Normalization is very sensitive to outlier points. One way to deal with this is to automatically detect outliers and remove them. Another way is to use standardization, a different data scaling technique, where instead of min and max, we compute the mean and standard deviation, and then remap each feature by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. Standardization is less sensitive to outliers, and it would work better in our case. Think you can implement it? Share your code with me and the first to get it right will get a shout out in a future video. Next time I'll teach you the K nearest neighbors classifier.